Okay, go for it. So today will be something different than the usual stars. Uh, so I would like to tell you something about excitation in heavy ion collisions and ultra cold atoms. So I will start actually with ultra cold atoms. Uh, and then depending on the time that I may uh, tell you something about heavy ion collisions. So this is the this is work done in collaboration with uh, Kazuyuki, who is present, and uh, this uh, 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 and PhD student in Warsaw, and Gabriel Kuglaszowski. Uh, so there are two topics. Uh, so this is pretty new thing, so I will start with this one. And uh, actually, this is the first time I'm, I'm presenting this topic, so uh, yeah, I'm curious how it will go. And then depending on time, uh, uh, the solitonic excitations in heavy ion collisions. Uh, I can tell you something about this. Okay, so let me start with the simple things. Uh, so concerning pairing in spin imbalance superfluids, so as we all know, there is a condition that sets the limit for the chemical potential difference uh, between spin up and spin down component at which superfluidity is lost. So called Clockstone Chandra second limit, which defines this difference of in chemical potential to be of the order of the, of the pairing gap. So if you look uh, what uh, spin polarization is doing to the quasi-particle excitations, so this is shown on these plots. So you have uh, here two, two branches of uh, quasi-particle excitations. So this H is, uh, uh, is proportional to the chemical potential difference. So as you can see, the majority, the branch for the majority component is going down. And at some point, actually it crosses the, the zero value, so it's certain so it's certain uh, region of energy, this branch becomes uh, negative. And uh, which gave rise to some speculations concerning the existence of the so-called Sarma phase or interior gap phase, because in this region, so you have this branch that is fully occupied. So when you look at the uh, distribution of the occupation numbers, as a function of energy, so this is this region, and in this region you uh, you have uh, the uh, the majority branch that is fully occupied, so you have occupation number one here, and then the minority uh, branch is empty, so you have a zero zero occupation. So you have a such a strange situation that you have third system, uh, you have third, you have gap system here, you have gapless uh, part here, and again, gap here. So this is, looks like a phase separation in, in momentum space. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, but this, this uh, strange phase is turned out to be unstable at zero temperature if you have a balanced masses. So if you look at the, uh, the phase diagram for the homogeneous system. So this this uh, this pharma phase uh, does not extend to the zero temperature. So it's uh, so it's zero temperature. You essentially have a normal and superfluid part. Then things change if you allow for inhomogeneities. In homo, if you have an inhomogeneous system that uh, you may have this full deferral larkin of Chinnikov phase, which, uh, <clears throat> which is uh, uh, specified by the pairing gap, which is modulated in space. And uh, uh, you can have actually larkin of Chinnikov uh, postulated this, 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 uh, of, uh, this expression for the Modulation where as full deferral gives uh, this expression. So this is this is this is really the 
describing the area uh, uh, not <coughs> the case when the time reversal is broken here and the here the time reversal symmetry is conserved. So in the case of uh, ultra cold atoms uh, and uh, uh, in the vicinity of BC and BCS crossover, there were some mean field studies concerning the existence of uh, various phases and uh, this particular uh, FFLO phase uh, was uh, only predicted not to extend to the unitary regime where we are, which we are actually interested in. So, uh, uh, <coughs> but these were purely uh, mean field studies and uh, recently, well, maybe not recently, but uh, like 10 years ago, uh, uh, Aurel and Michael shown using uh, DFT that uh, actually this Latin of Chinnikov phase may exist in the unitary Fermi gas. So this is the plot as a function. So this is the quantity which uh, is uh, related to the energy. And you have this branch here denoted by the by the red curve, which describes this Larkin of Chinnikov configuration, which looks like a super solid state. So this is the case when the when the when the pairing up uh, changes uh, like here and it induces, as you can see, the polarization. So this is the so this is uh, uh, the uh, the dashed line describes the density distribution of the majority component and the solid lines the 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 minority component. So the problem with this uh, with the experimental detection of the space uh, in the ultra cold atoms is that this region where the uh, where the polarization admits the admits the uh, existence of the uh, of the space is actually quite small in volume. So this is because the trap is usually inhomogeneous, it's inhomo it's, uh, uh, gives the inhomogeneous distribution. So there is a small volume in which this FFLO phase can exist. Unless, of course, uh, we will try to look for this phase in the, in the traps that gives the uh, uniform distribution of the particles. And uh, this is something new that those who were present last week heard during Martin's Vierlein's talk that this is uh, that this is uh, 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 something that they are now uh, investigating, and then they, they they can produce such a such a such a such a traps where you have the uniform distribution. Excuse me, let me ask you: Why do you call it a super solid state? Do you have a charge density way of instability? Well, you have a well, you have a uh, you have a modulation. You have a modulation of uh, of uh, of density fluid. of the superfluid, and that induces also the modulation of the of the density. Oh, I see. Yeah. The bottom channel of the density. Yeah. So actually, you see here. Yeah. So okay. this change of the of the plane potential gives the modulation. Uh, <clears throat> so now let us have a turn to a slightly different question. So can we can we induce a stable polarized region in the otherwise uniform unpolarized uh, system locally? That is in polarized region, uh, uh, which can be somehow dynamically induced. So, so let us have a closer look what is happening when we have a, such a nodal point of the, uh, in, in the pairing, in the pairing field. So, uh, uh, so once you have such a such a, uh, uh, the pairing field of this shape, so then due to the quasi-particle scattering, you you immediately realize that there will be uh, uh, Andreev states that are localized due to the quasi-particle 
due to the quasi particle scattering uh, on the sparing potential, and then they give rise to uh, they give rise actually to the uh, spin polarization because uh, you will have a uh, you will have a state that is more or less equal mixture of a of a, a, a spin down particle and uh, for example spin up spin up pole so uh, so schematically you have a distribution of spin down particle and spin up pole so you induce locally the spin polarization in the in the system and this this one can easily see if one if one solves the uh of the gen equation in the so-called Andreev approximation. So uh, in that case, uh, this Bogolibov Dejen equation reduced to the first order differential equation. And uh, although although quantitatively this approximation is valid if delta is much smaller than than uh, <coughs> uh, than kf square. But uh, but qualitatively it describes uh, it describes uh, properly the this phenomenon. <clears throat> so this is uh, so so keep this in mind and then and then uh, what is what will happen if we if we if we have a, such a two nodal points in one V system. <laughs> so for example, we have such a situation that we have pairing up that uh, is positive here. It changes sign to the negative, and then it's positive again. So we so around these points here and here, there will be induced induced uh, spin polarization. And if one if one look at the energetics of the of these two nodal points as a function of the distance between them, you can easily realize that they will be repelling each other. Okay, so uh, so this is from another perspective. This is something similar to what you can find in the in the case of super superconductor ferromagnet junction. In the case of the superconductor, uh, so if you have a, a order parameter here, if it it, uh, it penetrates into the ferromagnet, and due to the uh, difference in the chemical potential between spin up and spin down particles it starts to oscillate so it gives the modulation of this order parameter uh, <coughs> of the period which is which is related to the inverse of this uh, difference in uh, in uh, in in Fermi momenta of spin up and spin down particles so now depending uh, so now imagine that you can, instead of uh, this ferromagnet here, you put here another superconductor. So now depending where you put another superconductor, you may have uh, the case of uh, so-called Josephson T junction. So you should put it here because then the order parameter changes sign and becomes, uh, uh, becomes negative on the other side. So you have a, so, uh, so this uh, Josephson junction changes the sign of the order parameter. Or if you put it slightly further away, you can have uh, the situation that is uh, shown here. So again, you have these two nodal points and the pairing changes, uh, the order parameter changes sign inside and then uh, becomes positive on the other side. So uh, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so now can we can we create can we create dynamically such two nodal points in the uh, uh, in the Fermi gas? So uh, this is just to show you what is going to happen. <clears throat> so here you have a density. So we have unpolarized systems. So the density of spin up and spin down is the same. You can see here, this is the external potential. So we apply external potential that is spin selective. So it, so it locally will polarize the system. And then you can see what is going to happen with the magnitude of the pairing up. And then here's the phase of the pairing up. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, so <clears throat> as I apply the potential, uh, so I induce uh, polarization, and of course the, the magnitude of pairing is going down. And uh, as you can see, as you can see here, I uh, I have this the change of the sign of the pairing field because as you can see the difference between between the pairing outside and inside is is equal to pi. But this structure is unstable because as I showed you, this this uh, nodal points are repelling each other. So as you can see, uh, so as you can see, uh, these nodal points are uh, moving away from each other. And, uh, so we have a periodic system here. So they will not they will not move forever. But this is what is going to happen. Is this one D or yeah? This is one D. One D translational. Yeah. So, Real one D. Yeah. <clears throat> so now can we? So it gives us some hint how to how we can engineer the the structure of nodal surfaces. So we can apply uh, uh, the spin selective potential that polarize the system locally, and then we can wait a bit to for the playing field that due to the proximity effect will generate uh, the nodal structure, and then we can remove the potential and. Uh, we are looking for such a not for such a nodal structure that provides a stable configuration. So in this case, is the is the case of the spherical nodal structure. So it is schematically shown here. So the nodal structure it is uh, looks like it's here. It is this black uh, is denoted by this black color. So on this side you have the so so this is the section. On this side you have the pain field. On this side, you have the polarization shown. So, <clears throat> so you have another structure of the function of which looks like a sphere. So the pairing field, which is uh, uh, large here, goes to zero when the, <coughs> at the at the nodal point, and then changes its sign and becomes non-zero here, but has phase uh, uh, different by pi from this configuration here. And uh, the polarization, polarization, the maximum of the polarization uh, is uh, uh, where the nodal points are because of this uh, Andreev effect. So they are. So the maximum polarization is at the uh, is at the nodal points. Uh, okay. So we are, we are we would like to generate such a configuration dynamically. So uh, and we would like to use the uh, and dependent density functional. So this is the density functional that was used uh, for various purposes in the unitary for the unitary Fermi gas. So it contains uh, uh, so it contains the kinetic term, which is uh, <coughs> which uh, depends on the. Uh, uh, the polarization also the effective masses depends on polarization and uh, the normal interaction energy and uh, pairing energy and uh, in order to restore Galilean invariance we have to add the currents okay so this is quite a complicated system to solve so we have to use uh, supercomputers it's uh, about hundred thousand or up to million of equation that we have to solve. Okay, so this is uh, so this is what we uh, what we are able to, what we are able to generate. So this is the snapshot from the simulation, which I will show you in a moment. So uh, uh, <coughs> so this is how the polarization looks like, the local polarization. This is the phase of the pairing field. This is the pairing gap. So we generate. So we create the locally uh, spin polarized region, and then we remove the potential. And uh, after the removing of the potential, the, the impurity that we created is stable. So it, uh, so in our simulation, it looks like it lives forever. So it has this peculiar structure of the uh, of the pairing field, 
So the pairing field, as you can see, changes sign, goes to zero, and inside it's again non-zero, but it has uh, uh, it has a it has a different sign. The polarization, the maximum of the polarization, is where the uh, where the uh, where the nodal points are, and uh, and uh, inside impurity, the polarization is slightly smaller. And then you can see the base. The base is uh, uh, the difference between the inside and outside pairing field is uh, is uh, uh, <coughs> so the difference in space is pi. Okay, so this is so this is how it looks like in the dynamic simulation. So we apply the potential, which is a Gaussian potential. So it uh, 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 so it uh, it it locally repels spin up and attracts spin down particles. So concerning the time scales, when the potential is applied and kept and removed, this is the this is this order of magnitude. So, so when we apply the when we apply the potential, so first the energy is going down because we uh, we have some attraction here, and then we remove the potential here, and then the system stays. Okay, so so now the potential is on, and then we switch off the potential. And uh, as you can see, nothing is changing. So it looks like a pretty stable uh, configuration. Okay, so uh, why they, why this impurity is stable? So you may think of it in that way. So you can uh, divide the approximately the energy into two parts so one is related to the uh, to the volume part is related to the uh, uh, to the region of impurity inside this spherical nodal surface and then there is the, there is another contribution to the energy coming mainly from the shell where the system where the system has the maximum polarization so so the thing is that if you if you try to contract this sphere, so so in order for the sphere to collapse, you have to kill this pairing inside. So you have to so you have effectively the pairing potential barrier which prevents this impurity to collapse. And on the other and on the other hand, if you the impurity cannot expand like in one D system, so then although the nodal points are are repelling each other, but uh, it cannot expand because it would mean the expansion of the polarization region, which costs energy. And uh, due to the interplay of these two effects, it uh, looks like the impurity is uh, uh, pretty stable in our simulation. Actually, you may see here, when we try to uh, generate impurity, which is deformed, what is going to happen, uh, Okay, so uh, we induce the impurity, induce the potential, we apply the potential which uh, induces the, uh, the deformed polarized region, and then after relatively short time, everything becomes very good. Okay, so this uh, uh, dashed black line is uh, just to guide your eye. Uh, the, the spherical uh, the, the spherical configuration of the of the of the nodal surface. Hmm. So interesting thing is that you can do with this impurity various things. You may uh, uh, you may scatter them. You may collide them, and it looks like the structure due to the stability of the structure. It's uh, this impurity. This, mm -hmm. yeah. Question: What's the net mass of the impurity? Is it positive or negative? Net mass. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I, I wish I know. Because then, if you're in a trap, it would slow down if it's negative. Drop at the center. Yeah, we didn't look at. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 
<clears throat> so when you start to move impurity, so you, you may think of it like moving from this Larkin of Chimico limit towards, towards something that is described by the full the full deferral limit. So, uh, uh, so here I will show you that the non-central collision of two impurity and central collision here, and actually to show you how. Uh, so, uh, okay, so let me let me tell you how it was. Uh, okay, so uh, so we collide impurity in such a way that we first uh, apply the external potential. We uh, make this potential moving, and then we and then we remove the potential, leaving the leaving the moving impurity. So, so there's at some point at some point you will see uh, uh, <clears throat> you will see when the impurity is rapidly slowing down. So this big, so this is the moment when we remove the potential and the impurity is uh, at this point is slowing down. Okay, so it's here, yeah. And then they, uh, uh, and then they collide, but still as you can see, the structure is pretty rigid. So, uh, so again, they, they merge, and then again, this, uh, Peculiar structure of the pairing field is again induced in this larger impurity that uh, that was obtained from this uh, from this collision. So the same for the central collision. So in the central collision, you have uh, yeah, it's more violent. So again, so here again, the potential is removed, so you have to the slowing down, and then they and then they. Merge, but yeah, they they vibrate for some time. Yes, yeah, because it looks like yeah, it's 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 from this energetics that I showed you. So uh, it looks like it has it has it has actually the property of the droplet. So it starts to if you if if you try to deform it, it will try to uh recover the spherical shape because it's energetically energetically more favorable yes 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 so this is exactly what i uh, so this is exactly i'm sure we have this 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 the volume energy and the surface energy yes so this is this is mostly due to pairing this volume energy is pairing inside and this is due to this uh, due to this polarization, uh, this shell of when the when the when there is the maximum of the polarization. And, um, so what, what parameter actually gives you the speed of the, of the energy before the world they collide? And and is, is there any possibility to you know to tweak this parameter in order to have a higher velocity such that they actually go through each other? Okay, well, so uh, this is not what I'm, what I will be talking about, but we actually, uh, 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 we were investigating, we are investigating to what velocity we can uh, accelerate this impurity. Turns out that there is a maximum velocity uh, of uh, uh, the maximum velocity beyond which we cannot accelerate this impurity. Which actually I suspect is related to this full deferral structure of the pairing field, which is related to the polarization of the of the impurity. So uh, uh, we did not check systematically collision for various velocities. So I cannot uh, answer your question. So if you take this analysis, you expect this to increase the velocity. We're going to see uh, some kind of optimization. Yeah, well, well, that's possible. So you have to, so you have to remember also that you have, a, uh, so everything is immersed <coughs> in the in the superfluid system. So there are a lot of phonons that you that you uh, that this impurity create and absorb during the during the for example, collision. So they are uh, because everything is inside 
inside the superfluid fermi gas. And you don't have Galilean invariants anymore. The dispersion of these particles is probably not parabolic. Well, oh, certainly not parabolic. Because you have a background. Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, so we have everything with respect to the superfluid uh, reference frame. Yeah. What, what happens if you don't switch up the potential? Hmm. Well, that's uh, uh, yeah. They will simply go through each other. Would they not affect because it's not a the shape? Uh, yeah, but then if you have the potential, so everything then depends on the potential. So, uh, uh, so then uh, uh, the system will do what the potential dictates. So, uh, there's there is still the regression. Right? As soon as they touch each other, if, if there's a potential, they, they go on moving, they will still interact in some way. Yeah, so there are some interactions. I mean, I mean, I mean the question I was also raising was that kind of the heavy anchorage where mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when they have like, very high energies, they go through each other, but there is still some very interaction and uh, something, well, relativistically popping up, it's considered consistent with the interaction. But, uh, and then the other way around, when you have Low, low energies that they, they merge basically. Or one interaction, energy. so one interaction the long distance uh, that can be can be present there are mediated indeed by the superfluid. So uh, because there's no other long range interaction present in the system, it's only like emitting absorbing phonons and. Uh, okay, so okay, so, so mm -hmm. they have to touch. Yes, yeah, so they have to touch. Yeah. Well, there are. Well, there is. Uh, there's possibly some yeah, some some shell effects. There is there's a, energy. Yeah, there's Casimir energy. But this I well, I'm not sure whether this is important in this case. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we wrote the paper on that a long time ago, yes. <laughs> so I keep it in mind, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, well yeah, but I'm not sure whether this is uh, this important component of the of the interaction here, uh, in the case when you actually uh, excited the system quite significantly, so uh, uh, so there are a lot of so everything is immersed in the superfluid, so there is a bath of phonons around. Uh, so one can one can create even more complicated structures. Uh, so this is an example of uh, of the structure of impurity which has more than one uh, spherical uh, spherical node of structure so we are actually so uh, you're creating this hmm? potential what potential do you use here uh, oh that was uh, oh that's a good question I think that was the same I think it's uh, you have to simply allow for uh, larger radius and then the larger radius gives you uh, gives you due to the proximity affects these oscillations that the, the reason i'm asking mm -hmm. is either the potential for this it's not something to do with the proximity the satellite is also you said because this is i think of the droplet to show that there's the constant design you see in the surface where they have a gaussian shape there so if you use this bigger you see the matrix of course the density distribution inside now it's once it's homogeneous, you see a small oscillation of the base there, but you see for the paint, you're actually judging. Mm -hmm. You should see the, the, the density. Because if that's true, then probably you have, like in case of regular separating or droplets, you have volume energy and surface energy, and they, they put it to one mm -hmm. fraction. So the other question is. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think well, the, the density inside is uh, uh, fluctuating. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do not have a. It's fluctuating because of the, the polarization. Yes, that's but right. now the question is: is it's fluctuating around the constant where you have a profile? You see that? That's what mm -hmm, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I would have used the potential. Okay, it's yeah. more like a square one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. I I must admit I don't remember that. And, uh, uh, yeah, we. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm a little afraid so that this more complicated structure is a little artificial, so I'm uh, so I'm not sure how stable it is. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's more complicated. So I don't, I don't think so. This is yeah. because it's where we actually show this micro in, in one dimension of the look, I mean, for this periodic mm -hmm. structure. And this would be the same thing, you see, but we create it in, along the radial direction. It would be something similar. The mm -hmm. drop is very large. You basically reduce to the same case in Paris and four. And then the period is given, you see, by, by the polarization, you see, like the established programming. Yeah, well, I so this is this is. is uh, did you try cooling these at all? No, we we are we are we are, but we need to cool it. Yes. Uh, well, we wanted to we wanted to see whether it survives even in the case when we have actually excited the system because I, I'm sure that if we cool it down, that it's even more stable because mm -hmm. it's. Uh, uh, uh okay so uh, so at the end uh, the question is whether this can be this can be uh, created experimentally so we had some idea that we because we need to create uh, uh, we have to create a droplet inside the system so we were thinking the or a good way would be to apply to laser beam that each of each of the laser beam has a, well, it corresponds to the potential that is too weak to polarize the system, but when they when they cross, they create uh, they create the uh, the polarized droplet with the required pairing structure. So actually, we did a simulation when we used the uh, two cylindrical potential with uh, uh, that each has a amplitude that will not allow for for the for the for the polarization. But when they at the at the region they cross, so at the region they cross, they create uh, the structure of the. Uh, well, I think it's much easier to look for structure. Look for Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Well, we, uh, the cylinder is also. Uh, well, not sure. The greater cylinder. I think the smaller is better. <laughs> Remember that these plane wave states are not going to be stable. They're going to have snaking and stability. So this yeah, may be a volume instability yeah. stability because you, you, you modify the length a lot. Yeah. But, but that will require lots of energy. So there will be quite stable. I don't think that that's the case. You might tend to. Anyway, they don't they, need to. move around, but they, don't, they won't deform easily. Requires lots of energy. Anyway, the experimentalists were not happy with our suggestion because they thought that uh, uh, we heat up the system considerably using these two crossing beams. So uh, uh, we were discussing with uh, with the group in Florence, and, uh, and uh, yeah, well, uh, we probably should look for some other way to create it experimentally. So okay, so coming to the conclusions. So, uh, so interesting thing is that uh, we show that it looks like we can create dynamically stable, locally spin polarized region in the ultra cold Fermi gas, which has a specular pairing field structure, which is characteristic for this FFLO phase. So you may, uh, uh, <coughs> so that, okay. So another thing is that the conditions of stability are actually uh, does not depend on the on the details of the functional. So we actually did the same calculations using pure PDG, and everything qualitatively stays the same. Also, if in a state of no, 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 no. I mean, I mean the the. Uh, the stability of the structure when when I use I mean, when I use the schematic Hamiltonian, like the kinetic energy plus pairing term, and I do the same, and I do the same procedure, I simply. So you impose the pairing term. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Uh, <clears throat> no, there's no energy, it's not so No, 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 no. Well, I'm uh, time dependent, time dependent, self consistent PDG. That should work only for the weak. Yeah, well, what you're I, saying we need but to I use it, but I use it for a strong coupling. Yeah, so that's just. 
I know I cannot so, use I cannot use it, but I use no, it. No, no, no. It, it is the same. <laughs> but, but if Kito didn't fight for the theory of that you need. Yeah, yeah, I know, I so know that. Is I know. this the statement? The statement is you use a functional which we think doesn't have a full referral state, and in that regime you still get this time dependent. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. That's, no, but that's a different story. Yeah. That's, that's what you say. That's what you say. Yeah, this so is that's what you say. Yeah. yeah. Which whatever you want to see. G means you have only carried interaction, don't have mean field effects, don't have effective maps. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm He's saying. doing the, what then, we call BDG yes. and finds that even in the time dependent version, these are stable. Okay. By oh, the way, so I'm, I'm not uh, sure, I don't know if I trust the BDG results. Yeah, yeah well, I reasons that I've just looked at the paper and they're minimizing energy with fixed chemical potential. Okay, frankly, we did it only <laughs> because. Only because the referee the referee asked us to to okay. see whether the effect is uh, also present when you use pure BDG. So okay. we did. But it might be more stable than the ground yeah. state. <laughs> uh, well, also there is no particular reason why uh, this effect should be present only in the unitary in the unitary point. So we can go towards BCS or BEC regime, and it uh, uh, should be there as well. Although probably uh, unitary regime is the best uh, for the experimental realization. So, uh, so you can view this as, uh, well, you can view it as a, as a FFLO droplet. Although this is a very small droplet, so because the size of this uh, droplet is of few coherence length only. Uh, and there is, uh, or you can view it as a kind of, uh, uh, long-lived spin polarized excitation mode uh, that is present in the unitary Fermi gas. So for short, we are actually double Fermi. Uh, actually, I uh, so actually this name Fermi is used, <laughs> but it's, uh, in the in the anti ferromagnets uh, but it's uh, it's very rarely used because there is another name for the very similar. Uh, uh, so there are two names for the same object in the end, and they follow magnets, and one of them is ferro. Long. <laughs> well, it's for sure uh, because the ferro is uh, a ferro droplet is, yeah. or is uh, longer. So, okay. So there are open problems like uh, what would be the best experimental uh, the experimental protocol for the realization. Okay. So the thing that uh, we did not touch is and may impact the stability of various collision effects beyond the mean field. Uh, the stability as a function of temperature. Well, we, we found that small temperature, it's uh, uh, everything stays the same. This is just putting thermal occupation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's it. So this is something that we are still working on and uh, uh, and uh, I'm afraid I uh, I used most of the time, so I'm not sure whether it's. If people are interested, we can go a little further and hear uh, heavy ion Yeah, I see nods. No vigorous <laughs> so Go for it. Okay, so I, I can uh, uh, summarize. Uh, right. So so the motivation so the motivation came from this ultra cold atom experiment when they merged two clouds. And they reverse the sign of the pairing heat in one cloud, and they merge. They saw the soliton uh, that appeared uh, when uh, at the point when these clouds uh, merged, and uh, they saw uh, the whole solitonic cascade that developed. And uh, the last stage of this cascade was the vortex, and uh, we actually. Uh, Reproduce this experiment, so we reproduce all the stages of the solitonic cascade in our in our uh, time dependent PFT approach. And uh, so the question is now whether similar effect can appear when you collide two heavy nuclei. So when you collide two heavy nuclei and you change the phase of the parent field of one of one projectile, what is going to happen? Okay, so uh, I will skip few transparencies because it's
<clears throat> okay, so we are colliding two superfluid nuclei, nuclei with different phases, so all this schematically shown here. And uh, of course, uh, there is a different question in the context that we would like to ask. Uh, so of course, uh, how this, this solidonic structure can be manifested here, but how, what is the in, impact of this uh, on the obs uh, observable quantities? Okay, so. The particle number. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so then. Yes, yes. So this is so this is low energy heavy ion collision. So this is non non radiative. So we so we collide nuclei right above the Coulomb barrier. So they so they have only the energy that they that allow them to to pass the Coulomb barrier, but not much more, okay? This is very low energy collision. And then, uh, of course, the questions are concerning the kinetic energy distribution of fragments, capture cross-section, so these are the quantities that we are interested in in the nuclear physics context. So of course, in nuclear physics, we cannot control the phase of the ferric fluid, as in the cold atoms. But uh, then the question is uh, different because we may average over various phases. So, yes. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you during the sentence, sorry. <laughs> um, I, well, what do you use technically? Is it also DFT? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's DFT. And, and, so, so, so you, okay, and then how do, you, uh, how do you describe the nucleons inside your nucleus? Yeah. Inside your, your nucleus. So you have your kind of large nuclei, right? No, I have, I have two. I, I have two nuclei. Yes, but, but they have of different nuclei, right? Yes, yes. And how do you describe them within this nucleus? Are they like, because of low energies, they are, they don't move at all, they are just within the structure no, of the no. nucleus, or are they randomly? So no, 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 I use the density functional. So uh, in the density functional, I obtain this. Uh, so this is, so I can say, so I have a hard, so think like, like I have, well, I have hard to fog description. You can show the equation to show for yeah. the problem. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's uh, okay. I'm just asking because because uh, uh, when it's a superfluid, when you have droplets, it's a completely different interactions between the ingredients of that than when you are uh, when you have this this, this large nucleus. Right, it's the same thing. Same. No, Everything no. is the same. No. So you so the description is the same. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so these are the equations. So here is the mean field. So you have a, so you have a, so you have two nuclei. So we have two mean fields that are separated at first. So we have the pairing field that describes the uh, the pairing field in one nucleus and the other nucleus. You make them collide, and uh, so these are so to say wave functions describing the nucleons in each of the each of the nucleus. And, and, and how do you do the, and, and, uh, ah, and, and they automatically form the nucleus? Yeah, yeah, they automatically, this is, this is self consistent. It's so think, right? think, you know, square functionals of nuclei. Functionals? Like regular density functionals for nuclei. I have uh, people do mass uh, tables. Same thing, except they also have pairing in it. Okay. So I have two self consistent solutions. So, 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 so it's in the droplet model of the nucleus. Okay. Well, dro well, well droplet plus, 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 plus shell effects plus, shell effects yeah. plus, plus pairing. Yeah. So. You don't resolve the particle. Sorry? But you don't resolve the particle. You could if you yeah. want to. If you yeah. want to, you can do it fast. Yeah. And then the two particle interaction between this. I'm so sorry yeah. for, for drifting <laughs> off. Yeah. But, but, but um, so, so the two particle interaction between the nucleons. Uh, uh, so, so uh, I mean, this, there are no pines. No, 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 no. This is density functional. This is in fact an interaction which, which, well, where do you get the parameters from? It's a density functional. This is the density functional. So we have a, okay, so, uh, okay. There's still some feedback. So, so for this, so for this mean, which actually have a quite complicated, quite complicated structure, 
but it, it's a function of the of the neutron density, proton density, it contains spin orbit terms. Of course, it has parameters that were fitted to masses. This is what I want to ask yes, yes. to masses. Yes, yes. So there are, so there are many functionals in low energy nuclear physics that are fitted mainly to masses, radii. And, uh, so, so in the end, this is all the parameters in this model yes, or in this yes, description yes, are yes, set? Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. Okay. So we, we, do not, we do not fit anything here or change anything here. So we, we use one of the well-known functionals. Uh, okay, and then, uh, uh, so we cannot control the phase, but we can see what is the average effect when we, av when we average over all possible phase orientation between the one, one projectile and the other. So, <clears throat> uh, okay, so first, uh, what, is the, what is the magnitude of this effect? So at first, uh, you may think that it's not very large because uh, the playing field is under weak in nuclear in, uh, in nuclear system. So if you calculate the condensation energy associated with playing, it's not a very large quantity. But uh, then you may look from a different perspective. Uh, so what is going to happen if you have one superfluid with one phase and the other superfluid with another phase and you merge them? So when you merge them, so there will be the region between these two superfluids when the when the order parameter is rapidly changing because it will have to adjust from this phase to this phase. You can calculate the energy, you can estimate the energy due to this change of the order parameter. You can do it in Ginsburg Landau uh, theory and you will find out that there is the uh, uh, that uh, the energy stored in this junction that is due to this rapid change of the of the of the pairing field is uh, proportional to the sine square of the phase difference divided by two, and there are parameters describing the size of this junction. So, uh, uh, what is the uh, width of this junction? What is the surface of this junction? So, when you when you take uh, instead of this S and L some characteristic uh, uh, quantities for nuclei, and you will estimate what is this, uh, what is this uh, energy, you will find out that for medium nuclides of the order of 30 MeV, which is quite a lot. So this is something that certainly uh, can be detected. So uh, what we first did, we collide two very heavy nuclei. So when you collide with two very heavy nuclei, you do not expect they will stay together long. So, uh, 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 this is actually what we see. So these are, uh, if I correctly remember, if I correctly remember, two plutonium two hundred forty. Oh. Okay. So uh, so these are various stages of the collisions. So this is uh, uh, so each uh, uh, so each uh, figure here is cut into two into two uh, plots. So this one describes the situation when the phase difference is equal to pi and, the, and below you have the phase difference equal to zero. So here you have a density distribution and here you have a distribution of the pairing field. So the magnitude of the pairing gap. Just to make sure that I understand. So basically in your calculation it would be an analog of collision of two atoms where the nuclei and the electrons are all part of the hamiltonian. And uh, basically, you give enough energy to overpower the Coulomb uh, uh, repulsion between the atoms yes. when we come together. Yes. Right? Yes. That's what you're doing. Yes. 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 Uh, okay. So uh, in this case, you can when you look at the pairing field. So you, in this case, you see that in the case when you have the phase difference equal to pi, there is this uh, uh, there's this structure that is appearing here that is the analog of the solitonic excitation that they saw in the, in the ultra-cold uh, gas collision. And then, of course, uh, so actually it actually stays during the whole uh, collision event, and then uh, these nuclei separate. And then if they separate, then we can calculate the energy of the, uh, the kinetic energy of the fragments. 
So this is what is shown here, the kinetic energy of the fragments as a function of the various phase differences between the incoming projectiles. So as you can see, the kinetic energy is raising uh, when the phase difference is uh, raising from zero to pi. And the structure is actually uh, shown here. And you can easily see that this is exactly the sine square. This is the sine square term here. What was the initial uh, so it was right above the barrier, so I don't know, like 600. Oh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you see here. Uh, oh, no, it's, uh, yeah, Kazuyuki may, may, may remember. I don't know, okay. I was just above the Coulomb barrier, so the Coulomb barrier is probably like 700. In both cases, you lose kinetic Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so initial, so, okay, so, uh, it's also so relevant. So, so the Coulomb, so the Coulomb barrier is probably of the order of 700 MeV, I expect. So the energy, the kinetic energy, was of the same, of the same uh, value, more or less. Uh, okay. So what is going? So so what is happening? So it looks like when you collide these two nuclei, so if you, if you have the phase difference, so then the energy of incoming nuclei is stored in this junction. So it's like, so this junction acts like a spring that is, that is when it stores energy and then it gives it away to the uh, outgoing projectile. So this is why uh, this uh, maximum of the kinetic energy of the fragments occurs when the phase difference is uh, equal to pi. I, I wouldn't consider that. Okay. I would say that when you have the junction, they repel each other and they emerge with bigger kinetic energy, while in the other case, they attract the dissipated energy from internal degrees of freedom and slow down. Okay, so you may. I, I, I think it's okay. a method for correct interpretation. So you may think. Uh, I don't think you have a spring here, right? So yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that's debatable. So that's the debatable. So, it's, debatable. so it's, it's like. Uh, so, so, so the creation of this junction. So prevents the dissipation effects towards the, towards the internal degrees of freedom. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that's another. Okay, so this is just to, uh, okay. So in the case when you have a medium nuclei, in the medium nuclei, you will see something like, uh, uh, so you, uh, these two nuclei can stay together. So you will have something like a, like a fusion, but it's not actually fusion, it's just capture. Of the two nuclei. So then, so this is what this is what I will show you. When you have two medium nuclei, and then depending on the phase difference, if you collide them with the same energy, depending on the phase difference, you will see that in some cases they will uh, stay together. Okay, so this is exactly what this effect that I was talking about is uh, going to uh, show up in the case of medium system. So simply this uh, large, this large phase difference creates the additional barrier for the nuclei to, uh, to fusion, to fuse. So, uh, so one can estimate what is the, oops. Okay, so this is, maybe I'll skip this. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the plot showing the change of the barrier, effective barrier for fusion of the two medium nuclei. So depending on the phase difference. So if you have a zero phase difference, so this is 190 MeV, and it raises like about 30 MeV, uh, for the phase difference equal to pi, which <laughs> accidentally agrees very well with this very simple estimation coming from Ginsburg Landau. Uh, uh, which theory? Was, what did you do estimate before this or after this? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question. 
you, you, yeah, you, you suppose that I was doing that after, but actually, <laughs> actually, Kazuki may remind me. <laughs> because you may, you may, be, you may remember when we did it. Because certainly, I'm teasing you. No, 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 but that's a good question. But that actually, so we were start, we started to thinking about this Ginsburg Randa when we, when we looked at this plot for heavy systems. And then we arrived at the formula that I was showing you with the Ginsburg Landau. And then we turned to the medium system. So that was before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so uh, this is something. Uh, this is the, actually the last. Uh, uh, oh, so okay. So what is the conclusion <coughs> from this difference? So even if you average, because you, we do not control the phase in the nuclear collision, so even if we average over the various phases uh, during this uh, collision, so we get an effective race of the barrier of the order of 10 MeV, which is detectable thing in nuclear physics. So uh, uh, this is very difficult, actually, to compare this to the capture cross-section. So there were some attempts to do that, but uh, Guillaume Scamps actually did some work and uh, took experimental data for various collisions and uh, well uh, uh, so uh, it's a very complicated procedure that I'm not sure whether it's correct but he found that the effect exists although it's weaker than we predict so okay so that's the end of the story thank you Yeah, so this is the reason why we focus on on the medium and heavy because I don't yeah I don't know this is the good question I don't expect that you should consider like oxygen for example or calcium maybe it's also too uh, too light nucleus to there is a rule of thumb that you obtain significant pairing correlation if you have ten nucleus in this form of effects. And now they depend to see if they will open shell, you need that much. So you see above oxygen you have a little bit of pairing, but above calcium you have a little bit more. So basically if you go from there you see pairing to be significant. But it's still noticeable above oxygen. Any other questions? I would have a, a suggestion with regard to the first part of your talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it would have been interesting if you could actually uh, shoot a, a very strong sound wave from a field. A very strong sound, sound wave. Sound wave. Okay. And then see whether we can introduce the classical effect of the instability of the field wave. Because uh, when uh, Strong sound in classical physics usually we do it with a short wave. When it hits a short lamp, it actually develops a stability in the and the, the boundaries. And this instability is the evolved into what we are taking uh, your impurity out. Uh, it might be a difficult thing to do with the weak field. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. How big does the sound wave wavelength have to be compared to the droplet? Uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not uh, relevant because it hits the droplet uh, as a, it's basically as a real bond. So, so the delta function, but yes. so it's, you have all frequencies. Okay. Reality, yeah. Reality is a very thin band. That's why I said a very strong sound wave, so that it's very close to single band. That's all. Okay, so this is functional that we are using in the context of the nuclear systems. So, so it's, yeah, it's in orbit term and, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, since it's already, I mean, I... So it has various coefficients that you can see the, the, here that are... Uh, those coefficients can be related to nuclear-nuclear interaction or right. the cobalt procedure. 
Right, but, 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 but so my question would basically be, I mean, yeah, yeah, we have lots of data to look at this, right? And, yep. and, and, and uh, that's why I, I would, and there are many parameters in, in, in the end. So, so you see, this function fits, I don't know, several thousand of look at the, the data portions. Right. Something like 3,000, and the number of parameters is not big. So it's not much. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can do with much less than 10 the same job. So it's, it's this so is no, no, no big uncertainty there. So, so there is one set of values that is kind of taken for, for, for in, 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 so when you use DFTs, you have always one certain set of values that has been. Uh, it's not that simple. Uh, that's what I'm asking. Uh, so, so are there like different groups that suggest different sets of parameters or? Well, there are something yeah. like 600. Uh, it is a little, but there is a fluctuation, yeah. but those fluctuations are small and the scale is very large. Uh, so, 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 so basically you can take any of those sets. Yeah, we all roughly agree. And they're roughly But then they have small things, they might yeah. be better. You see, people ask, you see, they, they ask different questions. They want to describe something more right. accurately than the other. They actually, they, they use the, the principle, you see, he had just by the means. No, no, but there are, <laughs> there are some. There's the, there's the okay, but there are, well, there are a lot of parameterization, but we know more or less which are the functionals that we, that we trust the most. And, uh, you see, if you uh, choose any of those, you yeah. see, you think basically the same. So, but and there are only a few of them. So. Have, people, have people done this kind of thing that they have, or is this chosen like, like say, 10 of those uh, different sets of parameters? Yesterday, your friend uh -huh. Will Newton discussed 500. Will Newton showed yesterday results for 500, not 10, 500. Yeah, you see, he had a slide We said that I used 500 of them. Okay, yeah, I, they, I missed that probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so people have done. And, and, and this gives you some kind of error bands on certain yep. observables. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Just a quick question. So, N uh, is basically related to the density of density. But how do you get information about the velocity? N, the velocity. N, the density of N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, related to the density of Yes. So, what, how do you get information about velocities? Uh, so, uh, on, the, on the velocity of the impurity, or yes, uh, yeah, well, uh, well, in the case of nuclear system, you, you you have a center of mass that you measure. If you measure the velocity, you can measure the velocity of center of mass. In the case of impurity, you also can can uh, can define. Uh, you also have Center currents. Of impurity. Yeah. And you also you have yeah, and, and you also can calculate currents as well, yeah. So that gives you a yeah. if you current divided by density is velocity. Uh -huh. Fluid velocity. Is this the, is this the, the current uh, uh, something that you solve or are you just derive it from no the, the current once you, once you solve once you solve this equation you have access to the currents and everything. Uh -huh, as just to say you mean the current of the mass or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so basically, that's the J, I think. Yes, that's the J of the yeah. All right, no more questions? Okay, we can discuss some things later, but let's thank you. <laughs>